Thanks, Jenny, as I was just saying to Spencer, the thought of yet more documents being released um, means for many involved in this case, uh, the agony uh, is extended. From what we've seen released so far in these documents, how bad is it for Prince Andrew? Well, we're certainly not talking any any kind of criminality here. And to my mind, the allegations that Joanna Schober has made are relatively minor. Um, I mean, she, in her own words, has said that, uh, alleged that she voluntarily sat on Andrew's lap and in a bit of a jokey photo uh, session. Uh, they had one photo, I think, of her um, on Andrew's lap and Andrew's accuser, Virginia Jaffray, sitting with a puppet, a spitting image uh, puppet of Andrew on her lap. And as part of this, um, in Joanna Schoenberg's words, joke, uh, Andrew touched her breast. I mean, that seems to be what we're talking about. Um, unpleasant, no doubt, but sexual assault, um, I think, might, might be questionable. And uh, so I think that uh, it's a completely different ball game to the accusations and allegations made by Virginia Jaffray, which was settled out of court. And we must repeat, of course, that Prince Andrew has consistently said that he has done nothing wrong. So, Jenny, given that perhaps some of these details, whilst they will be shocking to a lot of people, as Spencer was just explaining, a lot of the details that have been released are hearsay. We are now seeing what people said in the you know, in one particular court case and people saying, so-and-so told me this about Bill Clinton, about Donald Trump. You know, they're sort of rumours. Now, rumours can be true and rumours can be false, but we don't know what they are. But, of course, it does continue to make uncomfortable reading for the royal family. Prince Andrew continues to be an embarrassment for the royal family. How does 2024 look for Charles's relationship with Andrew and, more importantly, in some ways, William's relationship with the whole sorry affair and his uncle? Yeah, I think that is the point. I think the royal family, we saw them at Christmas looking um, very happy and comfortable in one another's company. You think they've got through a really bad year this time last year. We were all talking about the release of Harry's memoir. And that went on for weeks, of course, and, and was very difficult for them to, to handle. But they concentrated on their work, they got on with things, they've risen above it, they've, they've kept their mouths zipped about all of that, and I think they have started the new year um, on a new footing. And here we are. We can imagine King Charles's dismay as he opened the papers and looked, and there's his brother's name all over the headlines once again um, with very sleazy um, allegations against him. It doesn't look good. And I think, you know, uh, people don't abroad, certainly, probably recognise any difference between a working royal and a non-working royal. It's all a bit arcane for many people. And so the fact that Andrew no longer carries out official duties might almost seem irrelevant. There's no doubt that this kind of sleaze, um, whether or not there's anything in it, tarnishes the whole of the royal family to some degree. And I think that will make Charles in despair and make William very angry. And, and this is what, as you quite rightly said, you know, whether it's fair or not, the mud sticks, particularly when you've settled to the tune of millions of pounds, the mud sticks. And we were led to believe, you know, various people have, have been briefing that Charles has been much softer on Andrew than William wanted him to be, that William was really the one pushing Charles to kick Andrew out of um, Windsor Lodge, very large um, grace and favour house that he rents uh, on the Windsor estate, and that Charles well, he wasn't willing to put the boot in properly. And I just wonder whether that relationship between Charles and William, William seeming to be a bit more of a tough cookie than Charles, whether that might cause problems in the next few years. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a different kind of relationship, isn't it? Um, like it or not, um, Andrew is Charles's little brother. Um, and for William, it's an uncle, a fairly distant uncle, probably. And I think it was William a couple of years ago who uh, issued an ultimatum to his late um, grandmother, the Queen, um, and said, look, if you're going to let Andrew back into the garter ceremony at Windsor, which uh, Andrew very much wanted to do, William said, well, I'm not going to come along. I'm not going to take part. Um, and he won the day then, and he's won the day since. I think he is taking a tougher stance. Um, Charles is uh, not unfeeling by any means. He's mm. actually a real softy, and he 
He cares deeply about uh, people and things and peace and harmony, and he wants everything to be all right. And so we've seen um, him inviting Andrew to family occasions and to, to Sandringham, and even including his ex-wife Fergie along as well. That was a, a, a gesture of great goodwill. Um, and I think that is really where Charles's heart is. Uh, but I don't think that even he would consider for one moment now allowing Andrew back into any kind of public role. Yeah. Jenny, I think that's really interesting what you're saying about people slightly misunderstanding Charles and not realising that he is something um, of a big softy. And sometimes when you see him getting grumpy, it's, uh, I think it's because he is quite an emotional man. He slightly wears his heart on his sleeve, so it, it comes out, whereas I think William is a much more controlled personality. So, so those emotions don't, don't come out. And so some people sort of think that Charles is, is grumpier than William. I suspect it's the other way around. We just, we just see more of Charles's emotions emotions bubbling out because he's that he's you know, that, I, I think, that sort of chap flowers in his hair and um well not smoking weed but being real quite hippie if you're right and saying you know peace and love yeah. around the world <laughs> and around the family that was what i really want but uh it's it's hard to achieve in that in that family anyway I think that's right, yes. He's had more luck um, hugging trees and talking to plants, perhaps, <laughs> sometimes than dealing with his own uh, family. Jenny Bond, thank you so much for talking to us this afternoon on Talk TV.